The first sword missed Aiden's head by an inch. It slammed into the massive catapult's wheel, stuck for a moment, and jerked free. In that breath of time, Aiden batted away the second sword and threw himself down the hill. This foe was beyond Aiden's skill. His only chance was to get away, to escape with. Aiden looked down at the torn parchment in his hand. It was something important, this parchment, something of infinite value, the key to it all. Only, Aiden could not remember why it was so precious. He only knew that it was, and, he only knew that it was, and that he must not let the enemy get it. As he ran, Aiden glanced over his shoulder. The knight, in dark armor, crashed down the hill, gaining rapidly. His cloak trailed behind him like a gray wing, and he swung his two swords in a wide arc, carving the wind. The blades came closer and closer. Before Aiden could run another yard, the knight in dark armor fell upon him. Aiden turned and fended off a blow, then ran a few steps, turned again, sidestepped one blade, and barely blocked the other. "'Where will you go?' rasped a voice that seemed to reach for Aiden. "'Your kingdom is in ruin. Even your king has fled. All is lost.' The enemy's taunts threatened to strangle the small hope that lingered in Aiden's heart. But Aiden would not give in. Aiden blocked another savage blow from the enemy and slashed with his second blade. Again, Aiden lunged away from his foe. Suddenly, he saw his chance. Beyond the next hill, a horse struggled, its reins tangled around its dead rider's arm. Drawing from its final reserve of strength, Aiden charged up the hill and dove for the horse. It shrieked and staggered under the sudden weight, but did not fall. Aiden swept his sword up and cut the tangled reins. His thrust, he thrust the parchment under his breath. Pray, little. He thrust the parchment under his breastplate and slapped the horse hard on its hindquarters. Go! Aiden screamed. The beast reared briefly, but then surged ahead with such force that Aiden nearly fell. He could not reach what was left of the re oh, reins with his free hand, so he clutched the horse's neck with all his might. Aiden looked back. The knight in dark armor was now far behind and had given up pursuit. Just as Aiden allowed himself a grim smile, huh? something hit him hard in the back, knocking him off the horse. He heard a sharp snap and felt the air force out of his lungs. Huh? He lay in a heap, his face to the ground. A dull pain throbbed in his right wrist. Dizzy, he spit dust and debris from his mouth and looked up weakly from the ground. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw an enormous black wing in the gray sky. Suddenly, Aiden was kneeling on a high stone platform. His sword was gone, and his hands were bound behind him. Oh, the pale warrior stood tall, uh, tall before him. His long gray hair was drawn back, and a thin black circuit, like a tin crown, rested above his strong brow, penetrating hazel eyes. Home, when he spoke, a sh shrill ringing came to Aiden's ears, and the sound faded, huh? And he heard the warrior's words. He was saying, Make you the same offer I made you your companions. His voice sounded rich and kingly. Ah, above all else to be trusted. Oh, fuck. Ah.